Okay, guys, now we're gonna see a class one. So we're gonna see the whole design. First, I'm gonna tell you like the steps to follow. So we have a bilateral free end saddle on another edentulous area. So a class one mod one, modification one in this case. So always when you have a free end saddle, you just have four options to put as clasps. Okay. So what are those options? Just the first things, the first thing that you can think of is an RPI, number one, number two, a rod wire or a combination clasp, number three, an RPA. Okay, mechanically it will work, so it's irrelevant if we have a cast retentive arm or a rod wire arm. You will understand later when we talk about fulcrum this part. On your last option, depending on the undercut and where it is located, you know that your undercut changes your decision. A stress breaker. Okay, so in this case, imagine that we have uh, an undercut in the distal buckle. So we are going to use a uh, back action, but it's a cast. So, and this one, to make it work, we will need a long minor connector as a stress breaker. Okay, so what can we use on the distal end? An RPI, which has a Michel rest. We're talking about mechanically to work. We can use a rod wire because it is flexible. It's not going to damage the tooth as much. So it's relevant if you put your rest in the distal or in the Michel. That's why the rod wire, you can put your rest on the distal. And in, on an RPA, again, the rest in the Michel. So mechanically, they all work. Three, and your last option because of the undercut would be a stress just to use a stress a stress breaker. Okay, so you know already that the I bar, which is part of the RPI, engages a mid buckle undercut, or with a modification, a, a, a T modified bar would engage in a distal in a distal buckle undercut also. So this here. You know the the rod wire engages also in the missile buckle. Okay, on a buck in a buckle undercut. And you know now that you can if you have a distal buckle undercut, you can use a stress breaker and use a back action. Or another missile buckle, you can go for an RPA. Okay? We already talked about the parts of every single clasp. Now, what happens? If you say, hey, but now I have a distal lingual undercut. Again, use your stress breaker and put your put your um, back action class, vice versa. So you already know, yes, your rest co comes, your retentive arm comes here, guiding plane, here with the rest and continues there with the structure and long minor connector, okay? And if the mesolingual, you say now my undercut is in the mesolingual, what can I put there? Well, in this case, it's like really, really complicated. It's unlikely to happen. You will choose to create a buckle undercut in the mesial and the mid buckle and the distal. So I'm not going to complicate you with this case because it would be to choose a reversed or vice versa rod wire with a mesial um, rest and uh, it will complicate this portion so it's unlikely to happen but so this is your options that you have in each one so again you have a free and title first option you have rpi second op option combination class third option an rpa your last resource a stress breaker and you can go for example depending on the undercuts um with the back action So now, it all depends on the undercuts. You know, cast, it needs 0.01 of undercut inches. And a rod wire would need a 0.02 inches of undercut. So more undercut, okay?
so to go deeper in the tooth. Now, look at this, uh, this design that I did here. I'm going to show you, uh, well, two variations of the design. So when you want to design first, you decided where was located your undercut, which clasp you would use, which clasp in which position according to the undercut. In this case, we're saying that we have a 0 0.1, 0 0.1, undercut and in a mid buckle okay so an ideal case we put it there now as it is an rpi uh this is the drawing of an rpi so we already know the missile rest the missile rest so we'll have a fulcrum line so class one and class two have they both have a fulcrum line a definite fulcrum line okay so what does it mean it means that we will come here, the fulcrum line goes from your rest to your rest. So that's why it's important for you to determine where you're going to put your rest. So we put a line in the rest and rest. Okay. So this is my line, my fulcrum line. So it means that anything from here and here is going to go up, down, up, down. Okay. All the back to the front okay fulcrum line now what do we always have to do whenever we have this fulcrum line we need indirect retention so now we start talking about indirect retainers indirect retainers usually are usually rests that we put okay which also help in the st st in stabilization of the of the rpd okay so what does the theory says? The, the theory says that we have to put an indirect retainer when we have a free and saddle when it has to be 90 degrees from the position that we want to do it. So whenever we do that, we start analyzing if the tooth that is 90 degrees is suitable. So in this case, it would be like kind of this saddle. So 90 degrees for this part would be like around here and you say no the anterior teeth it's not I cannot use them like to support as indirect retention so always choose indirect retention from the canine and behind how so you start saying this is not a good abutment for indirect retention this is not this is not oh I canine this is good but look if I have a premolar in this case like it would be even better in this case because I have a long and saddle free and saddle to put my two into my my occlusal rest in both in the single lung of the canine and in the missile fossa of the premolar so i put my rest there for this portion of the saddle and i now i need one for this one again i analyze doesn't work doesn't work doesn't work in this case going this way so goes I need something that goes from here to here because this is gonna do like this it's gonna do like this it's gonna do like this okay so again we analyze and we have the cannon and we say oh okay the cannon is a good one but I have on my first premolar also so again we can put them like that oh, okay let's use it so we put the, my rest in both the single of the cannon on the missile force of the promoter because we already have it because we're doing an RPI and here also so we, again we have an RPI here so we have another rest here so it's good we have really good so and now you ask yourself do I need something else in the front we're just missing how many teeth well, one two three so the amount of force that we're gonna have there is minimum just a guiding plane in the lateral, it's perfect. And a guiding plane in the middle of the cannon would do the job. And then we just draw here in the free end saddles the open lattice works or the mesh or um, however you want to design these portions, the mesh works. And then you finally decide while well, you go with your minor connectors, minor connectors. Always you have your guiding planes already here 
guiding plane is always next to a saddle area. So guiding plane, guiding plane, guiding plane because it's an RPI, guiding plane because it's another RPI. And then you just join together and you decide which major connector you want. If this is a, max, a maxilla, well, you can go with an anterior posterior strap, like in this case. Or you say, you know, I don't like anterior posterior strap. I want to do a plate. Okay, in this case, imagine you have a torus, so you cannot go with a plate. So, and here, you can, you can go with a plate. So you go and you connect everything until the hamular notch, and you go there. So now I'm going to show you a variation of this. So in this case, I say, okay, my second option, in this case, because of the undercuts, because I had 0 0.2, 0 0.2, I'm going to go and I want to do my rod wire. So now I put my rod wire, my rest, as it is rod wire, it is irrelevant if I put my rest in the distal or in the missile. So look at this, this variation, we have this. We have again guiding plane, which is here, guiding plane, guiding plane, guiding plane, guiding plane. And now I go and I say, okay, again, my fulcrum line is here and I need again to choose my abutments for indirect retention. Lateral, not good one. Those are good ones. So let's put them again in both together, you know, the cannon and the premolar. Rests, nice. Now in the other portion, have it again here, I have my cannon. Okay, I'm gonna put my rest now. So it's gonna be a guiding plane and a rest in, the, in my cannon. Always in the single on there, nice. And I have all the force of pressure distributed in all the pallet because I'm using a, um, a, palatal, uh, a palatal plate. So you can see, there's another variation can compare them. In this case, because I was using already the RPI, I take it and I put them together here. Here we had already one and two, it's okay. And the guiding plane, that, that was enough. In this case, because of the undercut and everything, we changed slightly the design. We kept it this way. Third possibility. You can come here and you say, you know, the undercuts tell me that I have just 0 0.2 here and 0 0.1 here. So then put a rod wire here and an RPI here. Or imagine it's vice versa, then you do it vice versa. And then you say, hey, but I have my undercuts in other places. And then we go back to what we had. And then you choose. You're gonna put what? You can put an RPA, depending where it is, or you're gonna use a stress breaker for a distal buckle undercut, for a distal lingual undercut. And you just draw it here, okay? And then, because in this case, we're missing this anterior portion, we can go just with a, ma um, a maxillary plate, or a palatal palata plate, or or anterior posterior strap, because we need to connect this to this portion, so we cannot just like leave it in the air. Always has to connect with something. Okay, so this is the way to design one class one. You can see the, uh, the three different cases that I did. So just to show you how you modify and how you choose your abutments and how you can change your clasps depending on the position of the undercut. Okay, so always, always guiding planes next to saddle areas. Your fulcrum line is going to be always from rest to rest whenever you want to choose it. Now remember the rule, always something ahead of the fulcrum line has to be either a guiding plane, okay, a rest, or a rod wire. Or the last resource is a stress breaker to make it work, to make it flex, not to damage the other tooth, okay? And everything behind can be cast, no problem, it will work. Okay, so that's 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 the rule, the principle. So imagine if you wanted to put like, well, if this line would have been like around here, and you would need another class, which we will see in a in a class two. 
uh, we will see that case and uh, I will explain it better with, with that. So this is a class one, you already know which are your options and how it is just a matter of adapting ourselves to the position of the undercut, the amount of undercut we have, and choosing the right abutments for our indirect retention. Okay, you can put more indirect retention, okay, it won't damage, but it won't be necessary either. So, but as long as you don't design anything that it will hurt the patient, that will be detrimental, it will work. Okay, so no, it will not be ideal, but it will do the job. Okay, so with this, we finish the class one, and then I'll, we'll see the class two.